All right. So, wait, time out. Did I show right. you the? Did I show you the meme? <laughs> like this is my brother. <laughs> he taped a, a thing that said, "Do you want to play a game?" In the, over the toilet paper roll. Oh my god! And the toilet paper roll had duct tape on it. Oh <laughs> my god! If you like what you see so far, hit that bell for more. You don't talk like that. I don't. All right, we're gonna play uh, top ten. Are you ready? Top 10 most dropped. It's a key. It's a key. Are you serious? It's manual transmission. <laughs> okay, so we're going to play top 10 most drops in the NFL. Woo! Okay, it is a combination of tight ends, wide receivers, and running backs. Now, um, it is top... It is top nine, actually, because there's, like, a, a tie at ten with, like, eight players. So, we're just wow. going to top nine. Uh, let me give you some hints. Sweet. Okay. Sweet. Um, in the top nine, uh, all of them except two had over 100 targets. Um, okay. One had over 100 catches. Okay. The lowest was... 50. So most of them were kind of in the 50 to 60 catch range. Okay. Okay? Go ahead. Let me guess. I'm going to give a hint? I, don't, I, I mean, you don't get a, a hint this early. I'll give you hints along the way. Jesus. Antonio Brown. No. Julio Jones. Yes. Julio Jones is number three. 113 catches, nine drops last season. Nine? Not, yeah. Not the only Falcon on this list. Ridley? Calvin Ridley, 10 drops last year on 64 catches. Right. My condolences, Mr. On 92, 92 targets. That's 19 more completions you should have had. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> you just got to think of a like, high-volume guy. Edelman? Edelman's on the list. Yeah, number seven. Eight drops, 74 receptions. Okay. Um, Kelsey? Kelsey is top 10. Seven drops, not on this list. Okay. Um... Robert Woods. Uh, Woods is not in the top 20. Okay. All right. I'm trying to think of high volume pass. Sure. Teams. Sure. Um, so, I will I will give you a hint now because the list is going to start getting Amari a little Cooper. Tough. No, no Amari Cooper. Okay. Not on the list. Okay. Um, so uh, this was a tight end whom you adored, still adore. Eric Ebron. Eric Ebron. There we go. Nine drops on 66. And 14 touchdowns. Yeah. I yeah. just traded him. Yeah. Nine Why drops. Why mad at me? I just traded him. Yeah. No, it just doesn't mean you didn't adore Odell him. Odell Beckham Jr. Nope. Believe it or not, no. Jarvis Landry. Yes, number one with 11. Really? Yep. 11, uh, 11 drops on 149 targets. 81 receptions. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Bad catch rate, right? Oh. Bad catch rate. Well, the cl the quarterback situation in Cleveland was a little sloppy last does season. It, no, does no. it constitute a target if it's near him? I mean, the guy's or, got size. He's got hands throwing. the size of Nebraska. I mean, he does have a couple of catcher's mitts. Yeah. All right. So right now the we got size number of Nebraska. He's got. We got uh, number one, number two, uh, number three. Ebron and Julio are tied at three. You got Edelman. So there's uh, four remaining on the list. So I'm going to start giving you some hints. One is um, plays in New Orleans. Thomas. No. Kamara. No. Who the hell else is in New Orleans? I have no idea. Uh, old, old, old time target. Ben Watson? No, close. Jared Cook. Jer oh, Cookie? Nine, nine, 101 targets, nine drops. Cookie. 68 receptions on 101 targets. Cookie with the most accurate passer in the league. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the next guy uh, is in Baltimore. He's in Baltimore now? Uh, okay, played last season in Baltimore. Willie Sneed. Nope. John Brown. No. <laughs> Although Brown's, Brown's on this list. Um, 
Brown's uh, got, Brown dropped six balls last season on 97 targets, hmm. with only 42 receptions. I have no idea. Not, can we just can we just talk about that for a second? What? John Brown only caught 42 passes. He dropped six on 97 targets. What's what's the percentage? Six drops on 47. Because you add in order to figure drop percentage, you add the drops to their receptions, and then and then you divide it out to get the percentage. So what would that be? 53. So he drops six out of 53 catchable balls. A little bit less, so like twelve percent. It's a lot. All right. Uh, no, is it Baltimore? No, nothing. Refused to run the forty. Crabtree? Yeah. Hundred targets. He did run the forty. It just took him like a lunar month. <laughs> um. All right. So Crabtree nine drops on a hundred targets last season. Only fifty-four receptions. That Baltimore quarterback situation was rough. All right. So we've only got two more. My favorite player in the NFL. Jesus. Your favorite player. Who's yeah. my favorite player in the NFL? Without a doubt. <laughs> this is unquestionable. Tom Brady. <laughs> nope. I don't know. There's only there's only been two jerseys you've worn in this car. Shane Falcon. Oh, and Tom stop Brady. it. Stop so, it. I, I, I've worn a Bill Selby jersey and a Mariano Rivera I'm jersey. I'm talking about baseball. I'm talking about football. football I mean. Okay, well yeah, that's fair. Uh, I can't wear football jerseys. I I mean you, know, you give me a paint stick, I could turn it into a tent. You know, like <laughs> I can't wear football jerseys. I don't have shoulders. <laughs> I don't I don't possess these. Yeah. Um, your favorite player in the NFL. Yeah. Jeez. Listen, you tried to trade for this player for three years. And I've told you a hundred times now <clears throat> that Coleman. Would... No, not Coleman. David Johnson. Oh. David you Johnson. You didn't tell me in the fantasy realm. You just yeah. you just gave me no, that. no in the, in the NFL drops I, really. Yeah. David Johnson. David Johnson dropped eight out of seventy six targets. Is he the only running back season. on the list? No. You ready for the next one? The last one? Last one. Saquon Barkley. Nope. Ezekiel Elliott. Nope. Is he current Randy? Buffalo Bill? McCoy? Nope. Gore? Nope. <laughs> Yeldon? Yeldon. Wow. Yeldon was top ten in drops last year. He had fifty five receptions. That's a on lot. Seventy eight targets. Dropped eight. So eight, sixty three. 78 targets? 78 targets, had 55 receptions, dropped 8 of them. 50, so he would have had 63 catches. Would have had 63 catches last season. Think about that. That's wide receiver 1 numbers. Like well, Cra- Crabtree didn't even have... Oh, yeah, he'd out... Yeah, he'd... And well, if, if, you, if, if you think of it in the frame of mind, then 4 receptions a game is 48. Right. I'm sorry, 64. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Math guy. I knew you were going to pick that up. 64 is four receptions a game. So, are they looking to replace that? Well, here's here's what gets me, right? Mm-hmm. So, we talk about trying to get the running backs involved more, right? So, we signed TJ Yeldon, who's in the top ten in the league and drops, right? I love, I love how you just – that's how you laid the, set the table for that. Yeah. Well, then you go ahead and you look at other Buffalo Bills, right? So let's just pull up all Buffalo Bills. So, uh, leading the team in drops. Oddly enough, guess who wasn't on that list in the top ten? Zay Jones. No, Zay Jones was only credited with dropping three balls on 102 targets last year. Wow. Yeah. Impressive. I think in order for it to count as a drop, it has to hit your hands. So if it just bounces off your chest and your hands don't ever touch it, it doesn't count as a drop. All right, so last year, Chris Ivory led the team four drops on 21 targets. So when you ask yourself why Chris Ivory isn't with the Bills anymore and how that cut didn't make a lot of sense. Yeah, he had 21 catches. 21 targets. 21 targets. 13 drops. receptions. Yeah, but two of his receptions were some of the longest plays the Bills yeah. had last year. Yeah, they were. They were. Um, after that, there's uh, three receivers, three Bills receivers at three. Marcus Murphy, 
uh, Robert Foster and Zay Jones. And then you go down into the two territory. Uh, McCoy is only credited with two drops last season. Uh, Charles Clay is only credited with one drop last season. I don't I don't know who does stats for Fox because Fox is where is keeping these drop stats. But all right, so now this video's over. Yeah, right. I can't I can't take anything seriously now. The yeah, fact that uh, crew, Charles crew, Clay crew, only had crew, one crew. drop was it the Miami one? <laughs> I don't know if that one counts because they had to it turn did. around. Uh, no, it's wow. I could think of like six. I know off the top of my head right now. I can't and think where of... I need to look on YouTube to find those. But what I'm saying is that we we talked about Dable a little bit, right? Mm-hmm. And we talked about Dable for a long time. But um, if we think that the Bills are going to be um, bringing in uh, more volume to the running backs in the pass catching world, right? Singletary apparently catches the ball very well, although he didn't do it much in college, okay. right? Yeldon was one of the ja- one of the Jags' leading receivers, right? But dropped a lot of passes last year. Wow. Okay. Um, McCoy doesn't have the greatest track record catching the football. He really doesn't. He, he doesn't the- fight it though. You no, know, he doesn't. Like Marshawn Lynch Fights would look like he was swatting at flies out there trying to catch a football. If they're looking at trying to increase the running back volume, you brought in one of the leading receivers for the Jags. You brought in a wide receiver. You brought in a running back who catches the ball very well in Devin Singletary. So is that really part of the offense that nobody's talking about? Are that the Bills could look to add more receptions from the running back position? That, could, that could be something that they're moving to in, the, in this OTAs and or this uh, preseason is that they're going to they're gonna try to coach into Allen Listen, you got you got weapons you're forgetting about, mm-hmm. and if it's not there, take take the check down, man. Get well, to the running back. Let well, him get in space. That's what, running backs love space anyway. Well, let me ask let me ask another question. So, by getting guys that gray out really well in pass protection, are those typically linemen who can move for um, to be utilized a little bit more in the screen game? Because my thought process, and I ask this because my thought process is that if you're looking to pull linemen for a screen game, right, to to have that line move a little bit more, having run blocking linemen actually makes a bit more sense because oftentimes when you're running those screen games, the linemen are moving downfield yes. versus laterally, right, or backwards. Like in, in Players who are really good in pass pro typically move well backwards, right? So the linemen that they brought in don't tell me that they're looking to try and... uh, It doesn't tell me that they're looking to build strength in passes close to the line of scrimmage. Because if I'm running West Coast, right? Mm -hmm. If I'm running a West Coast system, I'm looking to clear... I need to clear lanes for Allen quick, Yes. right? So I need both my tackles to be going backwards. And I need my center and my two guards just snow plowing everything in front of them. Okay. Right? So the line that they are building, does it really equate to getting the running backs the ball at the line of scrimmage? I think that is just a manifestation of, uh, I think, I think you're putting too big of an emphasis on a screen game on who's able to run and who's not. Mm-hmm. I mean, line moves, let the guy in, then run up and kill somebody. I mean, that's very easy. It's very easy to get screens. I mean, that's one of the things that they, they install in every offense because it slows up the rush. Mm-hmm. If the rush doesn't need to be slowed up, you're not going to run a screen. Mm-hmm. Um, you may do it to keep them honest. You know what I mean? Like, for, for example, if, in, if I go into a game and the game plan is to throw the ball underneath all day, and the first play is for scrimmage, I throw a 70-yard bomb. Mm-hmm. To get those guys out of the box, that's what I'm going to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, you may run a screen just to keep teams honest so they can't – if they're blitzing you and they're getting pressure on you, yeah, you're going to run the screen because you need to back them off a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't think it's inherently uh, predicated on if you have pass blocking, guys that grade well in pass blocking versus guys that don't, or running backs that – I think every running back knows how to run a screen. Every quarterback knows how to run a screen. Offenses know. That's just something that's inherently built into every offense. Okay. It's like a, it's like having an insurance policy. Sure. You know, All you right. may never need it. Right. But it's there. 
Right. I was just curious. Yeah, I, just, I, I, I love the screen game because it does take a lot of pressure off of the guys coming at you 150 miles an hour. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bills were very bad at it last and season. And if there's teams that love to blitz, it's mm-hmm. great. It is. Right. It you is. want to blitz Allen, you want to play man, which they may not. So we may not see a lot of screens. It has to be open 40. A lot of teams are playing zone behind it. The screen just doesn't work. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. The Bills, with exception of those two big plays from Ivory last season, the screen game was ineffective for Buffalo. Because of Allen and his natural ability to run, you're going to see more teams that are going to come at 150 miles an hour, which mm-hmm. helps the offensive line anyway. Right. So okay, that's fair. you won't need the screen game because they're not going to be coming as hard anyway. That's fair. Okay. I'm down with that. I'm down with that. That's my opinion. It's in my prerogative. It's okay. You want the water?